Okay? So plantar fascia, easy peasy. Hmm? Okay. Now let's go to the part I, lo I love the most of the, uh, of the soil of the foot, of the atrosome of the soil of the foot. Because I, at first, when I be began with the study of the, plant, of the soil of the foot, I had difficulties. And I tried to, uh, to simplify all this approach and try to make the, an approach, a special approach, to have a better understanding of the structures of the uh, soil of the foot with the ultrasound. And first of all, we need to locate um, an image and to start with and to have a good landmark, you can see in every patient, okay? And this image will be this one. Between, sorry, between the proximal third of the sole of the foot and the, me the medium third, the intermediate third of the sole of the foot. If we place the probe at this location, we will find several structures, okay? And we are going to take a look with ultrasound, we are going to turn the image, and we are going to see what happens at this level. And at this level, because I am a romantic of the 80s, okay, for me, it's like a Pac-Man. This image is like a Pac-Man. <coughs> the Pac-Man, uh, I spend a lot of hours with the Pac-Man. The Pac-Man um, has come to our world to do two duties. First of all, to go away from ghosts. And the second is to eat the dots okay, of, the, of the maze. So the Pac-Man here is eating dots. The first dot he's going to eat will be the tendon of the flexor of the eternal longus. Welcome to mskfreak.com, a new way to learn MSK ultrasound. In this website, you will find different contents, chapters in some of the courses, detailed anatomical explanations with amazing high resolution 3D drawings lectures comparing the anatomy with the ultrasound images, and finally, real-time demos to reassure the concepts. MSK Freak, your website of MSK Ultrasound. And the second one will be the tendon on the flexor allusis longus. Okay? So let's see what happens when I put the transducer and see the image with ultrasound. We're going to see the sole of the foot, and we are going to take a look at the first layer and the second layer to understand the structures we are going to see. So if we place the probe over the central region of the solid foot between the proximal third and the intermediate third, okay? Remember that the solid foot has a quite uh, oriented, medial oriented ori um, disposition, so slightly medial. Okay, when you put, put the, probe, the, the transducer, slightly medial, okay? Because you need to have this view here. You need to have a good view of this muscle here that will be the flash of the uterine previs, okay? You need to have a good view of the Pac-Man. So once you have the Pac-Man, remember, the first dot he's going to eat will be the flexor of the uterine longus, and the second one will be the flexor allusis longus. So, Let's see what happens with the Pac-Man at the ultrasound. There are several structures you will need to recognize. This is the highlighting of the structures, and this is the same ultrasound image. Okay. So the first of all, we can recognize the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia is located superficial to the flexor digitorum brevis, you can see here. So this is the flexor digitorum brevis, and this is the plantar fascia, which is quite superficial and very, very wide. Second structure we need to, do, to, to recognize is the maxillary superior of the Batman, oh, the, Batman, oh, the Pac-Man, sorry. And this is the flexor digitorum brevis. The flexor digitorum brevis will be all this muscle here. The third structure will be the inferior maxillaris of the Pac-Man, that will be the quadratus plantae muscle. The first dot he is eating is the flexor digitorum longus tendon. And the flexor digitorum longus tendon is hyperechoic because we are perpendicular with the transducer at this level. Eating is inside the Pac-Man, okay? And the second dot will be the flexor of his longus. But because of anisotropy, because it's changing from uh, deep to superficial, here is oblique to the probe. So it's anechoic, or hypoechoic, sorry, at this level because of anisotropy. And this will be the flexor alusis longus tendon. And 
just I will introduce you on depth the peroneus longus tendon deep to the Pac-Man and this structure here we are only seeing an oblique view but if we turn a probe over this structure and direct towards the, its insertion you will see a perfect tendon with a fibular pattern we are going to see later okay perfect so this is the first view of the sole of the foot the first image you need to, to, to locate and it's very very important now let's take a look at what happens how these structures behave as we go from proximal to distal okay so let's see what happens we are at the pacman always at the begin at the pacman and we are going to move slightly distal as you can see here okay and as we go distal you can see how the quadratus plantae muscle is finishing because it's inserting in the flexor digitorum longus tendon the flexor digitorum ten tendon is going uh, is uh, is getting flat and is beginning to divide into its terminal tendons okay so can how can we see these structures over there ah oh sorry and still you will have muscle of the flexor digitorum brevis so here you still have muscle of the flexor digitorum brevis you see the quadratus plantae which is ending and inserting into the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus because the flexor digitorum longus dot from here has divided into its terminal tendons okay and if we continue this term then we see that there's no more flexor digitorum brevis there's no more quadratus plantae you will see the division of the flexor digitorum longus tendons and you will see the division of the flexor digitorum brevis tendons and of course the lumbrical muscles so you will see all these structures here and you will see no more muscle of the flexor digitorum brevis no more muscle of the, of the quadratus plantae but the tendons and you will see the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus on depth with the muscles on the medial side that will be the lumbricals and the tendons of the flexor digitorum brevis over there so, okay perfect about the knot of henry again we will start at the pacman okay remember that the knot of henry is the crossing between the flexor aluthis longus and the flexor digitorum longus so we again begin at the pacman but now we are going to to move slightly proximal so remember that this hypergogic image here will be the flexor digital uh, allusis longus and this will be the flexor digital longus and as we move proximal and distal we are going to see how the flexor digital uh, longus is um, going uh, from medial to lateral in respect of the flexor allusis longus and let's see what happens with the ultrasound you can see the pacman this is the flexor digitorum longus this is the flexor aluthis longus and see what happens with the movement we are moving the flexor digitorum the flexor aluthis longus okay and you see here the crossing between the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor aluthis you can see i will follow the flexor aluthis longus here and the flexor digitorum longus you can see here how they cross at this level okay so this is the Henry's knot, or knot of Henry. About the peroneus longus tendon, remember that we need to orientate the transducer this way, because the orientation of the tendon of the peroneus longus is very oblique. Okay? So if we turn the probe, if we are at the Pacman and we locate this structure we saw an oblique view underneath the Pacman, and then we turn the probe over this structure, you will see this perfect fibrillary tendon on depth deep to the pacman now we are going to see the pacman oblique but you see how the peroneus longus tendon will insert on the first metatarsal at this level okay with this huge view of the fibular pattern about the adductor lucis and interosei it's not so important to check these muscles because it's usually mm, not useful to diagnose problems at this level but still there's no uh, knowledge as is important so to detect the uh, um, the transverse head of the of the adductor allusis um, 
the obic head is more difficult to see. I, uh, it's no interest for me. But the, uh, the transverse head is quite easy. So you will begin at the metatarsals in the short axis with the transducers placed in the short axis. And then we are going to move slightly proximal. And you will see how. Excuse me, here. A muscle, thin muscle, appears here, transversal, that will be this here, this adductor allucis. Okay? Okay. But interossi, again, it's easy to see the dorsal interossi, quite difficult to distinguish the palmar ones. So to see the inter dorsal interossi, we will locate the transducer in the dorsal aspect between the metatarsals in the short axis, and you will see these superficial bipennate muscles, okay, here and here, that will be the dorsal interossi. So, this was the, centra, the central area of the sole of the foot. Now we are going to take a look at the medial area. To see the medial area, we are going to start again, um, beginning from the medial, uh, central area to the medial area. So we are going to begin placing the probe over the Pac-Man again. Always start with the Pac-Man. Then we will move the probe medially. And you will see a muscle appearing in an oval muscle, a big oval muscle appearing here, that will be the abductor allucis muscle. If we follow this abductor allucis muscle, we are going to see a muscle appearing here, deep to the abductor allucis and lateral to the abductor allucis. Okay? And this muscle appearing here will be the flexor allucis brevis muscle. So you can see this, muscle, this is the abductor allucis at this level. Okay? And this will be the flexor allucis brevis. And the flexor allucis brevis will have the tendon of the flexor allucis longus. As I told you just, right, just before, you can see how the tendon of the flexor allucis longus, of course, uh, proximal will be at the central part of the sole of the foot, but as we go distal, it becomes medial. And it has its relationship going between both heads of the flexor allucis brevis. Okay? And the flexor allucis brevis will reach the, the medial and the lateral sesamoid, and the flexor allucis longus will be in between both sesamoids. So if we follow this tendon, the tendon of the flexor allucis longus, you will see how the flexor allucis brevis disappears and the sesamoid bones appear at this level. And between both sesamoids, you will see the flexor allucis longus tendon. If we try to follow this flexor, this abductor, allucis uh, uh, distally, you will see how this abductor allucis will insert here in the medial part, in the medial part of the base of the proximal phalanx of the first toe at this level. And we can see all this stuff with a video. This, is, this was my first 3D video. I hope you like it. We'll start at the Pac-Man, sorry, I will, here. And we will follow, sorry, we will begin again. We start the Pac-Man and then we move medial to see the abductor allucis muscle. We will follow this muscle and see what a new muscle appears on depth here. This is the flexor allucis brevis. If we follow the tendon of the flexor allucis longus, you can see here between both heads of the flexor allucis brevis, we will reach the sesamoid bones at this level. Okay. Now we are going to return to detect the abductor allucis here, and now we are going to follow this abductor allucis distally. I will see how it inserts in the base of the proximal phalanx here of the first toe. If you agree, we are going to repeat the video from the pagman to medial abductor allucis muscle. You will see the apparition of the flexor allucis brevis with the tendon of the flexor allucis longus going superficial. 
they both will join the sesamoid bones here, okay? And the flexor allucis longus will continue to the base of the distal phalanx of the first toe. Now we are going to follow the abductor allucis here. And following this abductor allucis, you will see the insertion, this is a tendon now, and the insertion here at the base of the proximal phalanx of the first toe. Nice, eh? I'm so proud of this video, <laughs> my first 3D video. Okay. Now let's move to the lateral area. Lateral area, remember that we have several structures. We will have the abductor digiti minimi from the calcaneus to the base of the fifth uh, tarsal. And we will find the um, lateral plantar fascia. I will find the flexor digiti minimi brevis at this level. And remember that this, is this structure, the peroneus longus tendon, is underneath the abductor digiti minimi because at the um, cuboid groove it becomes plantar. So we will start again at the Pac-Man. We place the probe over there. We locate the Pac-Man. Now we are going to move lateral. Until we see this oval muscle over there, that will be the abductor digiti minimi. The abductor digiti minimi has this lateral plantar fascia over there. Don't forget to check this, uh, this fascia when there is lateral pain at the heel. If we continue distal over the adductor digiti minimi, we will see something is appearing underneath this, this muscle. At the cuboid bone, sorry, at the cuboid bone cortex, you can see here, this is the abductor digiti minimi, and you can see here this structure here. That will be the peroneus longus tendon crossing from lateral to the sole of the foot, to plantar to the sole of the foot. Okay? Now, if we move distal, you will see how a muscle appears deep and lateral to the abductor digiti minimi. That will be the flexor digiti minimi. And you can see here the muscle of the abductor digiti minimi and the muscle of the flexor digiti minimi brevis. And of course, we can follow both to the uh, distal insertion and the Adductor digiti minimi will insert in the lateral part, in the lateral uh, area of the base of the uh, proximal phalanx of the first tarsal at this level, and the flexor digiti minimi previs in the plantar, in the volar uh, uh, area of the same uh, base of the first, uh, of the proximal phalanx of the fifth middle tarsal. And this is the video. Again, we start at the Pac Man, and now we are going to move lateral until we see. Over there, you can see, this is the adductor digiti minimi with the lateral fascia. We continue distal, and you will see, let's, let's start again, sorry, here. Pac-Man, adductor digiti minimi with the lateral fascia. We follow the muscle, and you will see the peroneus lengus tendon here. We are going, because I know you, you don't trust me, I'm going to locate this tendon on its long axis, and you can see here, the peroneus longus tendon underneath the Pac-Man at the sole of the foot. As you can see, a good view of this tendon. But let's return to the lateral compartment and we will see the appearance of the flexor digiti minimi brevis at this level in the deep part and lateral of the adductor digiti minimi. And if we follow both tendons, we will reach the base of the proximal phalanx of the fifth, the fifth toe. Sorry. <laughs>